Good evening everyone. This is Dr. Chahat Agrawal. I will be presenting my scientific paper on the topic Intradural Spinal Tumors under the guidance of Dr. Prof. Swan Singh, Department of Radio Diagnosis, MI, MSR, Mulana. Aims and objective will be to establish role of MRI imaging in pre-treatment evaluation of intradural spinal tumors to systemically classify frequently detected spinal lesions, material and methods used, study design, institution-based prospective type of descriptive study, set settings, a Philips 1.5 Tesla MR machine is being used. Study location is the Department of Radio Diagnosis MI MSR. The duration is January 2024 to June 2024. Inclusion criteria includes patients with suspected spinal tumors. The uh, tumors can be intradural or extradural. In intradural, they may be intramedullary that includes ependyoma, astrocytoma, hemangioblastoma. They may be extramedullary which includes meningioma, neurofibroma, schwannoma, subarachnoid metastasis. Extradural may be metastasis that are most common or cancers of the bones. Intradural, intramedullary tumor, ependyoma. Ependyoma is the most common primary spinal cord tumor in adults and second most common in children. Most ependyomas are well circumscribed and originate from the centrally located ependymal cells and grow centrifugally with systemic expansion in the cord. Ependyomas are also are seen as ISO2 hypointense on T1 weighted images and hyperintense on T2 weighted images. About 90% of ependyomas enhance after contrast administration and show well defined margins with a homogeneous pattern. Rarely they will have little or no post contrast enhancement. Most ependyomas do not restrict on DWI and ADC is similar or higher compared to the normal tissue. Ependyomas frequently present with hemorrhage, easily seen on T2 gradient echo and even more cautious on. SWI images as signal loss from blood products within the tumor or its rostral or caudal margins, which is also known as the cap sign. About 60 to 90 percent of ependyomas have associated cysts, which are classified as tumoral or non tumoral. Tumoral cysts are usually located within the substance of the tumor and reflects necrosis hemorrhage that shows inhomogeneous signal intensity and peripheral contrast enhancement on MRI. Case 1 Patient presented with weakness in bilateral lower limbs. As we can see, a well-defined solid cystic lesion, which is ISO to hypo intense on T1 weighted images. The lesion can be seen as hyper intense on T2 weighted images. On post contrast study, the lesion shows rim enhancement and enhancement of the solid component at the cranial aspect of the lesion. The lesion is located uh, is uh, is seen at the thecal sac in the midline of level L4 and L5 vertebra and does not show any expansion in the thecal sac. Hemangioblastoma. Hemangioblastoma is the third most common tumor. On MRI, solid portions of hemangioblastomas are seen as well demarcated hyperenhancing nodular masses. Small hemangioblastomas are isointense on T1, hyperintense on T2, and enhance intensely and homogeneously after contrast administration. They are usually located subpialy in the dorsal surface of the thoracic, more common than the cervical spinal cord, in 70% of the patient. A disproportionately large syrinx is compared as compared to the size of a tumor is seen up to 64% of them. Larger hemangioblastomas are hypointense on T1, heterogeneous on T2 from intratumoral hemorrhage with heterogeneous hyperenhancement after contrast administration. Hemangioblastomas that are larger than 2.5 cm always have vascular flow voids on T1 and T2 arising from the dilated feeding arteries and draining veins containing fast flowing arterialized blood. A cystic lesion with an enhancing mural nodule is characteristic but is less common presentation. <coughs> Superficial enhancement of the cord adjacent to the lesion may be present and may correspond to the perimedullary lesion. Case 2 A patient presented with pain in lower back region radiating to bile lo lower limbs. A well defined oblong intramedullary lesion is noted in the conus from D12 to up to L2 le vertebral level causing focal canal stenosis. The lesion shows hypo-intense hypo and hyper-intense areas on T2, T1 weighted images, heterogeneously hyper-intense on T2 and flare images. Hemosequences shows blooming, areas of blooming suggestive of hemorrhage. <coughs> Astrocytoma. Astrocytomas are the most common intramedullary tumor in pediatric population and young adults and the second most inter common intramedullary tumor in adults. Astrocytomas are most commonly located in the cervicothoracic and thoracic segments. 
astrocytomas are infiltrating poorly defined neoplasm and tend to be eccentrically located with systemic and fusiform cord expansion. Astrocytomas span about four or fewer vertebral vertebral segments at a time of presentation. Holocord involvement is rare and usually seen in pilocytic astrocytoma, mainly in children and adolescents. Astrocytomas are hypo to iso intense on T1 and hyper intense on T2 and star. Spinal astrocytomas usually enhance inhomogeneously in a nodular or patchy manner, and the enhancing tumor does not define the true tumor margins. Most astrocytomas do not restrict on diffusion weighted images, and their ADC values are not significantly decreased. They may have tumoral cysts with peripheral contrast enhancement as well as non enhancing tumoral polar cysts and sirenses. Hemorrhage is uncommon compared to the ependymomas and surrounding edema is variable. A patient presented with back pain and sensory disturbances. A well-defined intramedullary mast lesion is uh, seen in the dorsal spinal cord from mid part of D5 to D7 vertebral level with cord extension and narrowing interior subarachnoid space. The lesions appear hyperintense on T2-weighted images, heterogeneously hyperintense with few hypointense areas on flare, showing predominantly heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement. Syrinx is noted along C3 and upper border of C6 vertebral level. Thank you.